So YouTube team keep it clean What's going on it's Angry Raven here with another video And in this video I'm here to share my post game thoughts From the game that we all watched between the Baltimore Ravens And the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday night football And of course the Steelers ended up winning Comeback victory for the Steelers by the way uh, They won 16-13 to And that game uh, it represented so many things uh, It represented what the Ravens have been uh, in the past And it also represented a bit of the future for the Ravens this year And what I mean when I say that um, with the Ravens in the past that we've seen, uh, it's a lot of the same stuff. You're going to be hearing me say, like, you, you're you going to be able to listen to this video, and you'll be hearing a lot of the same stuff that you may he have heard in week two, week three, week four, like, even early on in the season. It'll be a lot of the same repeat issues, so y'all already know what time it is. But as far as the future, um, this is probably the – well – Depending on how the game goes tonight with the Bills and the Bengals, this could be the last home game for the Ravens uh, this year at M&T Bank Stadium. This could be it. That could be a wrap. They uh, may never have another game there uh, again this season. Um, and that's not so significant, but uh, it all just depends on the Bills and Bengals. And it could possibly depend on next week, too. But... Anyway, um, Ravens, once again, uh, double-digit lead up by multiple scores, blow the lead, team comes back, they lose. Y'all know how it goes. Um, where do we start? Let's start with a positive. Hey, the, the camera didn't die during the live stream, so there goes a positive right there. Um, but positives, no serious injuries. I mean, Brandon Stevens, he went out for a little bit, um, then he came right back in. Uh, but no serious injuries. They were pretty healthy. Even though, I mean, the only thing that was probably seriously hurt last night uh, was Gus Edwards' pride. Because he had three carries. Three carries. And not that, and of course, you, you want to go as the game goes. So you can't like be like, all right, this running back needs to have this exact amount of carries every game. And this running back needs to have this exact amount of carries. I don't think it should ever go like that. But if you see how the game was going last night, three carries for Gus Edwards, that's nasty. Um, and I guess we can go ahead and start with the offense, and then we'll talk about defense afterwards. Special teams, Justin Tucker made his field goal. Justice Hill, he had a nice uh, was that? Yeah, that was a kick return. Nice kick return that set the Ravens up nice. They wasted the opportunities. Um, last night, just a game of wasted opportunities. Over and over again One thing we talked about last night From jump Like the first play When Ravens first got the ball uh, On first down they ran the ball Like okay cool cool But then the next The next time they got a first down It was a run Then the next time they got a first down It was a run Then the next time they got a first down It was a run Then the next time they got a first down It was a run Then the next time they got a first down It was a run It was repeat They're repeat offenders Repeat offenders And it was like It was you couldn't even get mad because you knew what was coming. You knew what, what, it, what, what was to be expected. Pittsburgh, every first down that the Ravens ran, which was pretty much every one, the Pittsburgh Steelers were on it. Ravens' offense last night was so predictable. They have this offense where the Ravens, uh, they like, I know my guy Spencer, he calls it a phone booth offense because they keep everything in this little box. They keep everything in this little box, and, and they don't take advantage of the whole field. They don't spread it out. They don't do that. They keep everything tight, everything tight-knit, and I know Ravens are. I, I think they, they take in the fact that they're a tight-knit, close, family-oriented organization. they are taking it a little bit too far, and they're continuing to put that on the field and showing how tight-knit they are. So, but again, same issues. Same issues, same issues. And I, I understand why a lot of Ravens fans are like, um, they don't feel confident about this team going into the playoffs uh, because it's, it's a lot of the same stuff. Um, but, yeah, offense just, they couldn't get it going. Now, I was very surprised because there was one drive where it was first and 10. Ravens got a false start, so it became first and 15. And I was like, oh, okay, for sure, they're they about to run. I mean, excuse me, they're about to pass now. But they ran. And J.K. broke a big one. And I was like, oh, okay. All right, there we go. Um, but that was pretty much the only unpredictable thing that they did. And and actually, you know what? That Isaiah Likely touchdown, um, he, he caught that one. He didn't drop that one. But that, that Isaiah Likely touchdown, that was nice how they set that up. And, and imagine that. They, they spread out the offense. They spread out the receivers. 
and they 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 set him up to to get open. They set Isaiah likely up to get open, and it was nice to see. But we don't see that enough. We don't see that enough. Mark Andrews, he was having himself a game last night. He was having himself a game, um, but just Ravens they they lack consistency in the sequence of their play calling. They don't have complementary play calling. If if that's the best term that I can even use, they they, they don't like. And, and with Greg Roman with this Ravens offense, and again, it's not just Greg Roman; it's deeper than Greg Roman. But with Ravens offense, they have this issue where it's like it's almost like it's it's an addiction. It's an addiction to where they'll have a, a great play, they'll have a, a play that gets a bunch of yards, a chunk of yards, a nice level of success. And then it's like they'll be fiending, fiending to go back to a QB run, fiending to go back to a QB keeper. Every time, every we, we see it so much. It's like they were – and I know some of the decisions were Tyler Huntley's for him to just keep the ball. But uh, so some of them were play calls as well. And it's like the Ravens, they just don't learn. And it's like – and, and we, we see it happen with Lamar too where they'll do the same thing. It's like they'll have this big chunk play, this play that generates a significant amount of yards, so it's a nice first down or whatever, nice play. Then they go right back to the QB keep. And it, and it seems like it just throws things off. And a lot of times it just seems like it's a waste of a play. But again, these are issues that we've been talking about for a long time. A long time. So like I said, a lot of the stuff that we're saying in this video, it's all repeat stuff that you done already heard uh, before. But um, the offense just couldn't, I mean, same old stuff. They couldn't get it going, couldn't consistently get it going, couldn't finish, wasted opportunities. Y'all know the drill, same old stuff. So we ain't even got to focus on them too much. I mean, we could, we could look at the numbers. Um, let's just look at the offensive numbers. Uh, Huntley was 14 for 21, 130 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Oh, that pick at the end. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it was. Huntley just said, all right, whatever. Somebody go get it. Steal a Raven. I don't care. I, I don't know. I really don't know what that was. Um, and J.K. having a nice night, 17 for 93, average 5.5 yards a carry. Uh, and Gus with his three carries for two two yards. So, yeah, that was that. Andy Isabella, he did finally get a handoff. Last week, well, they, they just kept faking it to him. Uh, this week, he finally got a handoff. And then this week, he also got injured, too. So, I don't know, man. Mark Andrews, nine for 100, nine catches for 100 yards. Isaiah Likely, three catches uh, for 12 yards, one touchdown. Also had two drops. Now, one of the drops was um, one of the drops was Tyler Huntley just, he was getting pressured, and he just put it out to Likely, and it was a tough catch to make. So I wasn't tripping off of that drop. Um, but the drop toward the end of the game, where it looked like the Ravens were playing for a field goal, they were playing for a long field goal. It seemed like it because they sure weren't playing for a first down. Um, and Ravens, they they just – Ravens have this this offense where they just play so timid. They play very, very timid. They play like they're scared. Um, and it's just – and that's not even just the players that uh, – like one, one of my guys says, man, he said it, it starts at the head. It starts with the mind. He said that he said that the body follows the mind. That's what my guy JT always says. The body follows the mind, and and in this game, the mind. Where, where does the mind come from? Who who's the one thinking of? Who who's the one that's leading this team? It's John Harbaugh. It's Jonathan Harbaugh, and they the, this play this scheme this team. It's like they they play scared. They play not to lose. And it shows in the offense, it shows the way that this team is ran. And it's like, whoa, where's that killer instinct? Ravens don't seem to have it. Um, so it was sad to see. Uh, we talked about the lack of sequential play calling, the lack of complimentary play calling. Um, and just sometimes it'll be some head scratching stuff. Like that play that Isaiah likely dropped, his, his last drop of the game. Um, it's like they weren't even trying to get a first down. Like that, that, that pass like wasn't even close to a first, and I don't know, man. It's again same same stuff, same stuff that y'all already are used to. Uh, let's flip it to defense. Special teams, we already talked about them. Um, Justin Tucker, he made field goal. 
Uh, long field goal too, by the way. Who shout out to Justin Tucker? Shout out to the uh, the special teams, uh, the the unit because they didn't let it get blocked. <laughs> okay, we know how that's been. Um, but yeah, then again, back to that Justice Hill, that big return that he got. Uh, wasted, wasted opportunity. Nothing came of it. And the Ravens needed that. They needed a return. They needed a spark. They got a spark. Then the offense said, you know what? We got a spark. Let's put it out. Put out that flame. Put it out. So that was that. Uh, defense. Defense was ultimate bend. They bent all the way back. But for a while, they weren't breaking. They gave up 200 yards. 200 rushing yards. Well, technically, I think it was like 198 or 197, something like that. Oh, yeah, it was 198. And they gave up an average of 4.8 yards per rush. So they gave up about 200 rushing yards. Um, this is a defense that had been getting all this high praise uh, for what they had been doing. And, and they did deserve it. I know people say, oh, well, they were playing against some bad quarterbacks, which, yeah, they have yeah, been. But, hey, you can't, you can't control who's on the schedule. Um, but, yeah, they got pushed around yesterday. It's like for the Ravens, every first down was a predictable run, and a lot of times it wasn't working. But for the Steelers, every first down was a predictable run, and all of them were working, like all of them. They were getting big chunks on every first down. Like Ravens were getting pushed around like crazy, pushed around like crazy, could do nothing. Linebackers getting pushed around. No Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen have been doing their thing for a while. Uh, but last night was just not a good game uh, for them. Then, of course, Roquan Smith uh, with him just – he tried. He, he tried, but he couldn't make it happen with that Najee Harris, that Kenny Pickett, the Najee Harris touchdown. That was nice. That was that was a great play by them. Great play, great throw. Kenny Pickett had a lot – there was a lot of t- – the pass rush was non-existent. That was, it was terrible last night. Um, they did end up getting one sack, but other than that, the pass rush was just non-existent. Uh, there was some times where Kenny Pickett would get, like, flushed out of the pocket, but he would do this, these turnarounds and then throw the ball and get a completion. He was doing a lot of throwing on a run, um, but he was making it happen. He looked good last night. He, he looked good last night. He did his thing. He did not throw any almost picks. I know there was the one that got tipped, um, but, yeah, he didn't even throw any almost picks. Uh, George Pickens. Same old stuff. Y'all know how it goes. Up with George Pickens. Shout out to George Pickens. Um, and I know a lot of people were bringing up the conversation again. Uh, the George Pickens, uh, Jabo. George Pickens, of course, was doing his thing last night. The Jabo was inactive. Um, Deontay Johnson. He, boy, uh, Brandon Stevens had a rough night. He had a really, 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 really rough night. Really, really rough night. Oh, I felt bad for him. That's why I was disappointed with him when – um. He, there was an incomplete pass, I think in the end zone, and he started dancing. And I was thinking, oh, like I know you want to you want to build your confidence up, and I ain't saying, oh, don't ever celebrate no play, but I just didn't feel like he should have been dancing at that moment. Um, and then the <laughs> Steelers end up being the only team that was dancing at the end of the game. So, yeah, uh, but he, he had a rough, rough, rough night. Um, Steven Stems, I didn't even know who 82 was. I didn't, I didn't know who he was, but this dude said, oh, Oh, you don't know who I am? Let, let me show you. Jumped out of MT Bank Stadium to make that one catch over the middle of the field. Like Steelers, they they were just they were catching everything. And Ravens defense, like, they will make a stop. And it happened throughout like the whole game. Ravens defense will make a stop on first down. Um, even though Steelers, they would they would they would they would not give up a first down on first down. Like they were Steelers were getting some big chunks. But um Ravens, a lot of times they would Force a second down, then force a, a, a third down. Then on third down, it could be third and long. It could be third and 15, third and 14. It could be third and long. First down, Steelers. And Ravens, were, they were giving up everything. They were just giving it up. Giving it up. So, yeah, man, the defense, like, defense is, uh, yeah, the offense, the offense was bad. Offense was bad. But defense has had this issue with just a lack of closing out. And I know offense, a, a bad offense can be a heavy contributor to that. It definitely can because if the defense is on the field and they're 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 making all these stops, they're holding teams with field goals, after a while they're going to be like, man, uh, we can't do it. We can't do it no more. We're tired. We're gassed. We've been out here for forever. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I get it. I, 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 I get it. Um, but this defense has had an issue. They've had they've had a, a clutch issue. 
um, especially for everything that's been put into the defense. Um, but with offense, like offense, I you know yeah I, 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 I tweeted it last night. I said it on the live stream. I really thought that this game was going to be the game where the offense went for over thirty. I thought they were going to put it together and they were really going to make something happen. They were going to shock the world, but they didn't leave us with any surprises last night. Um, we the Ravens did not push the ball down the field. Um, they they really didn't. And then Mark Andrews got hit. Mark Andrews was getting some nice yak too. But Ravens were just they weren't pushing the ball down the field and it's like they weren't even trying. Um so yeah. And again with the offense, are we really surprised by anything? Again, we, we know the the level of or the the level of investment that's really been put into the offense, really the lack uh, of investment and it, it it shows itself. It it always shows itself. I mean, again, old story, old news, same old stuff. So anyway, Ravens are ten and six in the playoffs though. Take take the positives. The Ravens are in the playoffs. But um I know uh most Ravens fans are not very confident about this team in the playoffs. Anything could happen though. So there's that. We'll hold on to that. Um uh, but they are who they are. The Ravens, they are who they are. Uh, Lamar Jackson can come back and give them a lot of life, um, but he still, you look at what's around him and you wonder like, huh, okay, <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, they desperately need Lamar, um, they need him bad, um, I know a lot of people highlighting how last night's game continued to uh, increase his value, um, but yeah, they, they, they need Lamar and they need him in a big way, so yeah, man, because this Without Lamar, this team is, yeah, well, y'all know. Anyway, love y'all team. Keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. Uh, and just like the Ravens are, uh, when it comes to being in control uh, of their own destiny, when it comes to getting the AFC North, we out.